creating cosmos out of chaos. Because something that actually we've talked about yeah, we have. a lot in the last few days was this idea of when the cameras turn on, or it's like, you know, if you, if you come up and stand in front of a class or a performance, right, you embody this sort of role that you have to play. Like, okay, now I have to be this or that and, and have this energy. Whereas um, the challenge, the here. challenge is just to like, let's not shift in the roles that we play and just be ourselves and, and let our energy shine forward. So mm -hmm. that's something we're really working on as well because we even noticed, I'm like, oh, in the beginning, it's like, you're like, okay, rolling. And you're like, okay, you know, you're ready <laughs> in front of the camera. <laughs> I do yoga and I am incessantly happy. Yeah. Yeah, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And same thing as well. Like we had a conversation about, you know, many different spiritual, well-known spiritual teachers or gurus that um, have this, you know, idea that they have to be this perfectly aligned, peaceful person and people have this image of them, but then behind the closed doors, when the curtains close, sometimes these teachers are not what they're teaching and what they're, what they're presenting to the world. And, you know, that's... Yeah, well, you have to look at the generation they're from mm. and, and the culture that they're from. So, you know, like... There was Vivekananda, there were all these people who came to America in the day, but they only came for a month or so. And so in the 1950s or early 60s, then the immigration laws changed. Mm. And so then people were allowed to come from India and get U.S. citizenship. Mm. And so that's what allowed all of those gurus that maybe you're talking about, allowed mm -hmm. them to come and set up shop. Mm -hmm. So then you have Americans and Indians living together with completely different cultures, completely different understandings of what that relationship is. Mm -hmm. So it just kind of went horribly wrong because the people who came from India to bring yoga to the West, you have to look at why they left. So that's one thing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then you have to look at like, how did they interface with the Western culture when they got here and they were ill-equipped to handle fame and money. Mm -hmm. So you have like, you know, Rolls Royces and collections of various things and kind of pompousness and arrogance and all of that. And then women throwing themselves at them or else they had fantasized about how to get that American blonde. Right. You know, and so when it presented itself, it was like, I guess this goes with the, with the show. Right. So, and then the Americans were like, oh my God, I can't believe what I'm experiencing in yoga. Mm. So this is beautiful and I would do anything for them because now they've changed my life or I'm off drugs or they saved my daughter or whatever. Mm -hmm. And so then that just didn't, you know, that's a, a time period in history. Mm -hmm. That's the sacrifice that someone of my generation would have made in order to bring yoga to the current day. Right. And then, you know, as far as younger yoga teachers feeling like if they have enough power and money that they can do whatever they want, that's just a repetition of the same thing, but it doesn't quite have the same cultural interlock mm -hmm. that it did, uh, whatever we're talking about, 20 or 30 years ago. Yeah. That's interesting. You said the sacrifice that someone of your generation would make um, to bring you. There was yoga. no internet. Yeah, yeah. You can go shopping. <laughs> <laughs> nah, swipe left. <laughs> right. So, yeah. So, I mean, now you can pick and choose, and they're like, well, I mean, it's like, you know, like they order coffee. Right. You know, with a little bit of foam, but not too much in the thing, and I'd like an Americana with, you know, and so then it's like you're shopping for gurus, and it's, I want to, I want to like, I want to learn the script. I want to learn about vinyasa, maybe just a little bit of anatomy, but not too much mantra. And then, you know, and it's like, pardon me. You know, right. <laughs> so yeah, the information was in that person. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And the only way to get it out of them was to go and sit with them and hope that they would impart some wisdom that day. Mm -hmm. So when I started, I was getting breathing techniques, kriyas, from people who had just returned from India wow. and writing it down on a restaurant napkin, <laughs> you know. And that would be it. I would practice that for three months until I had the good fortune to meet someone else who might know something. Mm -hmm. So it was different. Yeah, and that's... so then, like, if, 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 if I'm trying to wait for the information or wait for the wisdom to come out of you, 
I'm going to hang out with you as much as possible. Mm-hmm. Right. You know, and then they're like, well, I mean, you have to do service and, you know, you have to clean your karmic slate and this and that. So I'll sweep floors and I'll clean the temple and I'll do your laundry and, you know, mm-hmm. whatever all that is. And I think that all of that is still true. I think it would really be a good idea to sweep floors and do service to humanity <laughs> in order to be open and ready to receive the teachings of yoga. Mm-hmm. I still think it's true. Mm-hmm. It's just kind of a funny interlock because for the Indians that were in power and had fame and money at that time, I mean, I've, I've worked in L.A. a long time and the people that who have gotten famous and I'm like, so what's it like? And they're like, it is really hard to not believe what people are saying about you. Right. Yeah. yeah. You're so amazing, man. You knocked that out of the ballpark. Do you know like 10,000 people were in that crowd? Like mm-hmm. you're touch nothing saint. Like you're just amazing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And like, you know, the first couple of weeks you're like, mm, okay. Like mm-hmm. that's a gift from the universe. Mm-hmm. And then after a while, you're just like, maybe I am that good. Right. Maybe I am. Maybe I do have some wisdom. You know what? I, you know, and so it's really hard for it not to kind of rub off. And so like Deepak Chopra, his son actually made a a film of him going back to, to India to do like Panchakarma and purifications Mm -hmm. of various sorts. And the whole time going into the movie, like at the beginning of the movie, like Deepak is just like, that press, I mean, that press agency, I mean, they got it all wrong. That wasn't what I had intended to say at all. And they said that they would edit that out, but they didn't edit that out, blah, 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 like all about this thing, which in yoga would be called an entanglement. Mm-hmm. He's entangled in the world. Yeah. So he's, he goes and he's doing lots of mantra and he's in sattvic diet and it's like he's a panchakarma. You know? And then he's like, and it's like you watch it start to dissipate. Mm-hmm. So, you know, what is that documentary called? I have no idea. You don't know? Yeah. <laughs> so I'd love to watch that. That would be yeah, very well, interesting. So that, I mean, that's really, that's really interesting. So do you think that these the Indian teachers that came in at that time. And I think this human to human thing is really beautiful and the absence of it brings a lot of confusion and entanglement in this day and age. Mm-hmm. Do you think it was the actual drug of American culture that took them down the path of looking for abundance through wealth and pleasure through the people that were following them and that kind of thing? Or do you think they were sort of, that was the intent of coming here? We've seen the, the Wild West documentary. Like I don't have any indication of what happened there other than what they put in that documentary. Yeah, and how they portrayed it and how they portrayed it like mm-hmm. was it as messy as 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 that showed oh yeah yeah oh yeah you're saying the drug of Amer- of american culture um and i wouldn't want a viewer to be confused mm. like the problem with american culture is money so how the money is being exchanged and then also how much money you have, the money magnifies what's there, you know? Mm-hmm. So the teachers that came over from India, they didn't pay for that wisdom, right? Mm-hmm. Whoever taught them, they didn't pay for that. That wasn't, that wasn't a monetary exchange. That wasn't a right. business exchange. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So then when they come to America and they are then selling, for example, Yogi Bhajan, um, his teacher, the Bihar master said, Yogi Bhajan went and asked for blessings, which is what a guru is for, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. right? You go to your grandfather, you go to the, to, the, to the one who's imparted wisdom to you and you ask for the blessing so that you can do your work. And he said, um, yes, I'll give you my blessing if no money is exchanged for any of your yoga classes or teachings and um, you never have sex with any of, any of the women that you remain celibate um, and chaste just within your family. And he disagreed to both. So then the blessing didn't come. Mm-hmm. And so now we see what happens when there's no blessings. Why those teachers came... You know, with Osho, like, 
and even with Maharaji, it's like the people that Krishna surround us, mm-hmm. all those um, teachers, you know, as they came to Maharaji, they're all doing drugs. Well, you know, what kind of drugs? Like Ramdas is like giving Maharaji right. like psychedelic uh, eight and, tabs of acid or whatever. Yeah, yeah, okay. Like to see what would happen. Yeah. Psychedelics and <laughs> whatever. So yeah, I mean, okay. that, but that's I'm just curious. Um, yeah. That's American, and so mm-hmm. oh, we're gonna try this. We're gonna try that. Like I always say, like, what would you do if you were Maharaji? What would you do if you were in the guru position, which now I am? What would you do if like there were a whole crew of hippies? doing acid would you put him in poses would you do purifications like why would you do a purification on someone who's still doing drugs Mm -hmm. like now you have people who are like okay i'm gonna get clean i'm gonna purify Mm. i'm gonna learn about this stuff they weren't doing that they were just continuing to do whatever they did and they just wanted to hang out with maharaji so it's like what would you do Mm -hmm. And it's like what Maharaji did was, he said, sing. Hmm. And he made them learn the, ch- the Hanuman Chalisa. He made them sing, Sita Ram, Sita Ram. And everyone who came to the ashram, like, if you want to s- stay here and you want to be fed, hmm. lodging is free, you must sing Sita Ram, Sita Ram for a certain amount of time every day, and then yeah. you'll get fed. <laughs> or whatever. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, yeah. However he worked it out, but it's like, there's no money exchange for any of these things. Mm-hmm. The idea is to give you the teachings and have you change and become a better person from it so that you can pass it on to others. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So to come to America and then that's a different culture. Right. And now everybody's like they pay for classes, you know, like they're going to the gym. Mm-hmm. And so now we have this kind of structure and then COVID helped to kind of destroy that structure. The business of yoga. Structure. Yeah, the business of yeah. yoga and yeah. the competition, like everything about mm-hmm. it and who's who's selling themselves. Right. It was never that way. It's like the the guru is the grandma or or the grandfather of the community. Mm-hmm. You don't always get along with them. You still touch their feet. It's like, thank you. Mm-hmm. You know, thanks, thanks. And 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 the guru or the the grandfather has the or the grandmother has the responsibility of looking out for the community that doesn't go awry. Mm -hmm. There's that sense of community. Yeah. So, yeah, so I think, you know, a lot of the problem really is in, is in, is in the money. Right. Right. And when you talk about that sense of community, did you feel that when, you know, you spent a lot of time in this ashram in Brooklyn, Kundalini? Or where were the ashrams? Yeah, you mentioned that you've kind of moved from there to Toronto. What was that like, like living in this kind of ashramic life that you took on? I grew up, or maybe I was born psychic. So that created certain complications. Mm. What kind of psychic? As a child, like I can read people's fields. Mm. I know what they're thinking. I often, like when I'm doing a concert, people are like, oh my God, you said something that was like, went straight through me. Mm-hmm. Or whatever, or I'll be, you know, working on somebody privately, and I'll just be like, "All right, so it's like this, and it's like that," and they're like, <laughs> "Yeah," I'm like, "All right, just get over that. Like that's <laughs> just something that I can do." But my parents, that was weird for them, mm-hmm. you know. Like they were like, "You weren't even in the house when we discussed that. Like, how did you know that?" And I'm like, "I don't know. Like the wind told me." <laughs> So it's like precocious, <laughs> sensitive, like weirdo. And that was tough because it made you different when you were younger? Okay, so my mom just passed away, took care of her for like last five years of her life. And even in the last five years, she's like, well, you always were very different than all the <laughs> other children. <laughs> you know, and I'm like, well, thank you. And Jay Ma, you know. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, that's fine. And then for me to come to her aid at the end of her life, when she needed to know about yoga nidra, she needed to know about all the meditative realms that you would be going through once you leave your body. Mm -hmm. You know, like so many people don't share that. So many people walk out of yoga nidra. Like they're like, sorry, like I don't have time, I gotta go. And it's like, really? Yeah. Like you don't have five minutes? And so one of my friends, 
Rusty Wells, when he had a yoga center, he put up a sign and he said, if you don't have time to stay for Shavasana, then this is not the right class for you. <laughs> That's beautiful. Please pick a different time. <laughs> you know, and I was like, right on. Yes. That's, so, yeah. you know, it's, so that's important information. 100%. Oh my goodness. Yeah. It's, so, a, it's important presence and that, that moment of, of processing for mm -hmm. everyone. Um, it's funny. Uh, when you look at the analytics of a lot of our videos, you see where a yeah, lot of people, we see it too. We see where people click off and you're just like, <laughs> uh. I've seen it firsthand. I, I used to teach at this one studio in Toronto called Equinox. I'm sure you've seen it. It's like a gym, but they offered yoga. So I was teaching yoga there and it was filled with, you know, lawyers and very um, corporative type of individuals. And literally at the end, it was exactly, you got to the Shavasana, everyone's like, got their phone out, like, I got to go to a meeting, you know, I, get, I did my yoga, you know, this, this, I don't need to relax, I don't need to, like, let everything sink into my body. And it was really interesting to see that. It's, again, it's like people's perspective, they're, Would, they wanted the asanas, they wanted the, the stretch and, and the challenge, but then they didn't want to actually process everything that's just happened through this practice and, and to be with themselves for a moment, to be in stillness and silence. What do, what do you think the importance of Shavasana is, of the, that, that mm -hmm. period of the class? That there's some things that you can't do. Right. There's some things only God can do. <laughs> you can't make the fruit ripen. You can't make the sun come up. You can't change the tides. And as you start looking, you're not in charge of almost everything. Mm -hmm. So it's like, you know, yoga is all about putting pressure on the body. And then that pause, which then allows you to check in. Did that increase your energy? Mm -hmm. Did that do anything? So it's like, you know, you do a pose, you do something. And then it's like, there's a pause and mm -hmm. it's just like, now, how are you? Mm -hmm. yeah. So all right, now we'll do this and we'll do that and we'll do some heart openers and pause. And it's like, and how are you now? Mm -hmm. And it's like, okay, first back bend. Yeah. That was a wreck. <laughs> you know, <laughs> fine. Second back bend. Hmm. Okay. Third mm -hmm. back bend. Yeah, I got it. <laughs> like, it's back. You know, yeah. so it's like you have to feel did anything open up from that and you have to be able to be in a co-creative conversation with the universe yoga nidra is that moment where you're like i've done my i've done my tapasya i've done my practice and now i will receive mm -hmm. and see if 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 anything has has changed and so it's like what happens when you're in shavasana or yoga nidra you know, is you go from the beta wave frequency down into alpha. And alpha is like tingling, um, melting, dissolving, daydreaming, staring. You know, like if you've done a lot of meditative work, like there's no, there's no blinking. Mm -hmm. Like they're just like, yeah. it's like, how are you? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, you're just like, oh, you're an alpha. Wonderful. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know? And then going down into theta. Theta is where all of your, your nutrient absorption, your m muscle mass, your subconscious reorganizing, REM, you know, hallucinations, visions, like everything is happening in theta. So it's like the idea of all those brain waves. You know, there's four main ones, and then there's the gamma sync. But the idea of going, understanding what those brain waves are, is because you're supposed to experience some of that every day. So it's like, yeah, you do some mm -hmm. like activity, and you do like whatever you do, and you're driving, and you're buying things, and you're talking, and whatever. And then, like, sit on the front porch and just like do nothing, watch an ant, you know like moving into alpha or have like a little layout after lunch, mm -hmm. like a little siesta, mm -hmm. you know, theta, you better be getting that in your sleep or you have sleep apnea. 
you know. And it's like every, every night you go into delta. And delta is when the body is comatose. You have no connection to the muscles. You have no... Mm-hmm. You can't move. And so it is the deepest form of sleep. It is the deepest connection to God. And so then you move down into delta. And so you die every night. If you pick up a child who's like they're sleeping, but they're in theta, you pick them up and they'll kind of like hug you a little bit or put their arms around you. And it's like, it's possible to pick them up. Mm -hmm. And if they've gone into delta, you're just like, honey, like, can you get her? Because like, she's a bag of rocks. I I don't know how she got so heavy. (laughs) Literally yesterday or two days ago, um, Juliana's mom walked in with Xavier from a walk and I was with Heidi and I looked over at Xavier being carried in. I was like, did someone shoot him with a tranquilizer? Like he was just <laughs> out. <laughs> total day, yeah. to, total day. Like yeah. it was Delta. Delta. Yeah. It was amazing. It was so right. funny actually. But go, like, can we, let's go back. But just, I'm saying if you don't do yoga nidra, mm-hmm. then you have no consciousness of what those, what those brain waves feel mm-hmm. like. And when I explained it one time at a yoga teacher training, there was a Mexican guy who had traveled and he was like, hi, karama. I had no idea. I thought I was dying. Like he thought he, because those sensations right. of like dissolving and you're just kind of like you're in, mm-hmm. you're moving down through alpha and you're just like, and you come back and you're like, did I, did I go, am I okay? Did I go yeah, somewhere? I'm alive. <laughs> I'm yeah. alive. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right. So he was like, oh my God, I thought I was dying. Yeah. And it's like, well, you were kind of. Mm-hmm. And so yoga teaches you how to move through the different brainwave states. Mm-hmm. So it's like, you need that. Mm-hmm. And so someone is doing, 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 doing. I'm so sorry I can't stay for Shavasana. Then it's like, okay, fine. But I hope that at some point during the day, you take five or 10 minutes to do nothing or allow your body to completely relax, mm-hmm. which might be in the subway. Right. You just might just kind of be like, and you might get it. Mm-hmm. But it's like, if you don't, if you don't go through those, all of those brainwave states within a 24 hour period, you're not okay. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And what's the number one disease is digestion and sleep up and sleep problems. Mm-hmm. So parasympathetic nervous system, rest and digest. Yeah. So, I mean, duh. Do you think that the modern day lifestyle of just like screen use and phones, computers, and just so much stimulation is also affecting the way human beings can enter these states? Like it's harder to go down because they're so stimulated? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's compounded by the fact that we're, we feel isolated now. Mm-hmm. Because of the pandemic. I'm saying well. we feel isolated so there's more screen time oh, yeah. than ever. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And yeah. then that's, that's terrible. You know, I hope when you're listening to us talk that you're doing yoga. <laughs> it's a beautiful wish. I like that. <laughs> um, yeah. Because the screen time, the, all the screen time inf- reinforces the idea that you're just a head. Your head that needs to be filled with information and all the latest tips and hacks and like whatever. And wisdom, we need to give you yogic wisdom and this and that. And so then you're, you're already disconnected from your body. Mm-hmm. So, you know, when, when people come to self-care classes or yoga classes, whatever, I usually just say like they're, they're heads that are walking around. Mm. Mm. They're not connected to their body. They don't know they're breathing. They can't feel anything. They're not connected. So, mm. yeah, I mean, our job as yoga teachers is to bring people back into their bodies because the body system is perfect mm. in every way. Yeah. Given a chance, it will correct itself without any external stimuli. Mm-hmm. No electrical shock belts, <laughs> no chemicals, no yeah. prescription meds. Like, you know, you have to give the body a chance. And according to yoga, the number one problem is either entanglement or toxicity, which is just the same thing. Just mm-hmm. one is physical, one is mental. Mm-hmm. So, you know, that happens. So you just kind of go along in your life and you collect dust mm. and then you need these practices to, to purify the mind purify the body mm. that's what's wrong that's so that's so true that's so interesting yeah 
I think I'm fine. So I start doing some mantra and then I'm like, Om Shreem Reem Shreem Kamale Kamalalai Prasida. And then I'm like, oh, no, I wasn't okay, like, was I? Because <laughs> then I'm tied in in a much wider, yeah. you know, that connection is wider. And then I'm like, okay. All that other stuff that was catching my attention doesn't really matter. It'll work itself out. Mm-hmm. That's what beautifully said. Yeah. yeah. I think that's important to remember. Yeah. And, and we all fall away and come back to it. There's like a deep faith in that practice. Even when you think you're okay, if you haven't been doing it in a while and you come back into it, that's the reminder, mm-hmm. the, the faith to do it. And then the reminder again, like, oh yeah, that, that's, that's the presence that we always forget when we get so caught in the noise, mm-hmm. you know? Well, and also just to address the idea that if you're not doing your practice, like just simply looking at why, why wouldn't any of us three have been able to get to our practice this morning because we're doing something of service by being able to talk to you? Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. The Dalai Lama, when my friend uh, Rich Davidson is the, the guy that did all the the nodes, you know, put the electrical nodes all over, mm-hmm. and um, the Dalai Lama sent his monks. It was a long time ago when I saw this, 60 minutes, so it was probably like the 90s or something. And so they put the nodes on, you know, these llamas' head, and then they have this graph, you know, and they're going along, and and he's like, okay, you ready? You know, and it's like, yeah, yeah, I'm ready, you know, and it's like, so they're talking about normal stuff, you know, like, Mm -hmm. how long did it take you to get here? And then, oh, so just a few minutes, this, that, and the other thing. So you see, like, the beta wave here, Mm mm-hmm. Okay, and then right here is when we start, and it was like, Like, I was like, wait, hold on. Like, I went back and I was like, wait, where's, where's, where's the alpha? <laughs> like, the alpha was like, it was just like, yeah, we had Mizza. Okay, we're starting. Wow. And I, it's like, I just went back and looked at that over and over. And I was like, they went from chak, chak, chak to. <laughs> I was like. That's powerful. That's powerful, Mm -hmm. you know. And so then they asked the Dalai Lama, he was like, you know, His Holiness, will you be offering your brain to inspire the people? And he was like, oh, no, 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 no. Nothing here, nothing, nothing, (laughs) you know. And and then they, they pressed him a little bit and he said, I don't have time to do my practice. I'm very sad about this. Mm. These monks, they are able to meditate for several hours each day. And because of my job as the ruler of my country and also of my religion, my day is filled with meeting people. Mm. Hmm. And it was just like tears just came to my eyes. I was like, even his spiritual practice was sacrificed so that he could be in service. Yeah. You know, Amma is the same way. Amrita Nandamayi. She does these programs that are 18 hours long. It's like, wait, so, you know, my neighbor came once to to the hotel because I told him I was going. And and he was like standing at the back and watching her give hugs. And so does she ever, what does she do for fun? Does she, (laughs) like, does she ever go to the movies? (laughs) You know, and I was like, not so much. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, if you're not doing your practice, like even then, like looking to see, like, what is that? Perhaps you're doing something of service for yeah. someone else, you know? Yeah. Or perhaps you're just going off into like a hedonistic pleasure wheel for a while. And it's like, maybe that has some merit as well. Mm-hmm. But it's only about being aware. Like yoga is just about self-awareness. Right. Hmm. We're not trying to change you. We're not trying to turn you into a robot that's able to do the primitive postures perfectly, you know. And there's like mm-hmm. young, there's a young teacher who I was supporting her classes for a while. We just moved to where we were. And she said, so yoga is just about making like different shapes, you know. And I was like, well, that's interesting. She was like, make this shape. And I was like, okay. make that shape. And I was like, 
Never was there any instruction about the rotation of the of the thigh, the being able to like intercostals, like there was never anything about what I was experiencing, right. like how I grew taller as I mm. pulled that twist or anything. It was never about what I was feeling and there mm -hmm. was never a check-in. Like, and now that you've twisted, now check your breath, take an inhale. Mm -hmm. Does that breath feel cleaner? Mm -hmm. Is there more room for you mm -hmm. to live your life? Right. You know, so it's like, What do you think of that? Like you were supporting the classes and it was about making shapes. There's information that's missing. Right. Yeah. People who are missing information are, are often suffering from trauma. Mm. They don't want to go deep. Why don't they want to go deep? Oh, because I might feel something. It's scary. Well, yeah. it is scary. Yeah, and so them. then, yeah. you know, it's like Juliana and I were talking before we started um, taping, and it was like, yeah, the fitness thing is a good introduction yeah. into yoga, but then there's usually something that happens. Mm. Mm -hmm. You know, you get injured. Yeah. Or, for example, one of my client, one of my students is um, there. She's teaching yoga teacher training, <laughs> and one of the guys who's in her training is sleeping, having sex with four other women in the training. Oh my goodness. <laughs> and she was like, oh my God, wow, well, what do I do? And I said, <laughs> yama and niyama. Yeah. Let's start going into there and start seeing, you know, how are you, how are you hurting other people? Mm -hmm. And the guy's married. Oh, oh my God. <laughs> well, I'm just saying. And so yeah. it's not to say that we don't fall on our faces because we do. Right. Mm -hmm. So it's like you start yoga and you're just like, yeah, I'm going to get fit and I'm going to lose 20 pounds. And then all of a sudden you think that sleeping with some guy in class is a great idea. And then all of a sudden your, your emotions are all tangled up and you're just, and you're like, oh, okay. Hmm. And then I say, okay, good. It's time for the other seven yeah. steps. The other limbs, yeah. You know, let's look at, at, at the other limbs. So mm -hmm. then... Your life falls apart, something happens, and then all of a sudden you have to look deeper. And I would say that's true through my whole life, where I'm just like, oh, what the heck is this? Mm -hmm. Mark and I were talking about life right now being some kind of combination of swimming and musical chairs. <laughs> 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 so the music stops, you sit down, and you're like, okay, now what? Yeah. yeah. Now i got this bag of problems. Mm -hmm. And it's like... Never in my wildest dreams did I think that I would have this bag of problems. And it's like, okay, how is yoga and faith going to take me out of this one? <laughs> right. Yeah. Somehow it manages to. That's the... Well, exactly. You, you embrace the practice of yoga and bring it into your life. It's taking yoga off the mat. That's really what I think the challenge is in um, a lot of these teacher trainings as well, because there's so many going on, right? I mean, you see teacher trainings everywhere. But it's the idea of opening the door for people to realize that yoga isn't just something you practice, even the connection and trust when you're on that mat for one hour or an hour and a half. It is truly like, what do you learn? And then how do you apply that to everything else that life throws your way? That's, that's true yoga, really. That's the true purpose of that inner connection that you develop through this practice. Um, but it's, it's interesting how people have to... Like they come into it, like a yoga teacher train, like you're saying this experience with this man. And it's like, okay, I'm going to be a yoga teacher. I want to learn asana work and assists and how can I, you know, help someone feel better in a posture. And then it slaps them right in the face because they're having to actually look deeper. It's, it's interesting for me, my first experience, I, I wanted a teacher training um, and I entered it through an athletic way because I was a gymnast before I was injured and it was just something that called to me because I really wanted to find a better healing for my body. I had a lot of back injuries and such. And I entered it with that intention and I left like I went through some like washing machine of trauma and emotions and I had to dig deep and reconnect something in my brain and in my heart and in my soul that truly and I tell this to this day I'm like that one that first teacher training just like it flipped me and it came out of there like a, a different person on a new path I mean and then continued that was just the beginning but that was the real powerful experience of having to face the real teachings of yoga and something that 
is, you know, I, I worry you because we talked about the business of yoga, right? Like how it's just booming and everything. And, and we've seen a lot of teacher trainings happening in that same way. Like what are your thoughts on how teacher trainings are now being brought forward to the world? And the fact that, you know, everyone can go and just do a teacher training and be a yoga teacher. But um, how do we make sure that people are still getting that experience? And, and if people are listening to this, how do they know which teaching or training is right for them? I'd probably go to the niyamas. Niyamas? No, well, I mean, niyamas isn't a word. We call it niyamas. Pardon me. Niyama. <laughs> <laughs> the yamas and the niyamas. Yeah. yeah. Um, you know, uh, whatever training you do, whatever information you get, the niyamas are there for you. Mm -hmm. So it's like svajaya, like study yourself. Mm-hmm. You know, if you're if if you're doing yoga and you're doing a twist, your liver's going to detox. You're going to have some work to do. Mm -hmm. And so then svajaya, like you just study yourself. Your life is going to show you what's on your plate, what needs to be attended to at this moment. Mm -hmm. So then you have to sit with that. And it's like socha, you know, you have to, like, clean it up. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Sit in gratitude, Santosh. You're not injured. Be grateful. Mm -hmm. You can breathe. You know, be grateful. Be grateful that there is a community. That I mean, that's why I'm here. Yeah. It's because you guys are creating a community, whether it's a portal community or, you know, in-person community. Like, you're, you're extending yourselves in order to give people a place to belong, to connect, and, you know, to sit with themselves and to even consider that you might be able to learn something about yourself, mm. you know? Yeah. Ishvara Pranidhana, like it's, how, how do you think the universe works? I'm not going to tell you, mm. but like how did the sun come up today? Mm. How did you get out of bed? How did you get from delta, which is the brain wave of being comatose, <laughs> To being upright and dressed and, you know, that's a miracle. Mm -hmm. Like, who's doing that? Who's watching over all of this? Who are your soul guides? Who, who cares about how this massive global detox works out? Like, it's all shifting. Right. We're going into this new age of Aquarius. We're falling on our face. We're not doing it very well, but, you know, it's only nine or ten months old we got a few more thousand years <laughs> <laughs> so it's like yeah all of our systems are falling apart because they were good for the piscean age mm -hmm. which was top down now we're bottom up and it's like how do we go and support everybody in being able to awaken mm -hmm. and i have one meditation teacher who says he he works with the christ energy the golden energy and moves it through the body star tetrahedron like merkaba all of that and he said that the second coming of Christ will not be someone out there, which is Piscean, patriarchal, mm -hmm. top mm -hmm. down. It will be everybody holding the Christ energy. Mm, that's beautiful. And mm -hmm. so it's like that's what you're doing. You're creating mm -hmm. the community so that we can all hold all of this together. Right. And when that happens, the world will be a different place. Yeah. Right. And right now we're like, meh, 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 but they did that, and mm -hmm. there's corruption, and, meh, and this isn't right, and that's not approved, and that isn't safe. And it's just like, yeah, because all of that is going away. Hmm. All of that is being detoxed mm -hmm. off the planet. Right. And what's coming in its place are these beautiful communities. I was telling Juliana, like, I'm watching Beatbox, <laughs> Dancing Championships. I'm, I'm, I'm watching, like, hip-hop like all these battles and it's like there are all these people in the room and it's like something happens something, and people are watching like the beatbox you know it's like a looping thing you know and then it's like something else and so and then the whole room everybody's holding this feeling together right, and they're like yeah, woo! you know and the, everybody's on their feet at the same yeah. time they felt the joy at the same time they're holding the light together mm. and i'm like yeah that that's what I want to feel in yoga. Mm. I want to feel like everybody is just is detoxing 
the junk which has collected on their heart, the old systems which have come into their life and are broken. Yeah. I want to feel like we're all just, we're all creating something mm -hmm. new, out of light, out right. of nothing. Do you feel that way when you're performing, like your music? Because, I mean, we've used your music a few times in, in Ascension in the program that we did, and there is this beautiful energy that you radiate when you listen to the music that you create. Mm -hmm. And I do believe it, like it brings you into this presence. Do you feel the energy of others when you're performing in that same way? Like there's like something being awakened when you're in that state of performing? That sounds so divine when you describe well, it. <laughs> maybe it doesn't feel like that to you when you're, you're cause I mean, you're- Is you're that how it feels to you? It feels like that to me because it truly, it feels like you're channeling something so beautiful. Like whether it's a mantra or just your, your sound, you know, you feel like you're closer to the presence of divinity for that moment of time. And it's beautiful, like even just to practice yoga to that music. Mm -hmm. I enjoy practicing yoga to music rather than silence because it, it's almost like a shortcut for me to sure. to connect even deeper because to that feeling. energy. Yeah, it's a, it's feeling, a feeling. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I, I would say like it's the Dalai Lama, like oh ha ha ha, like nothing there. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I mean, what we create is just what happens, mm -hmm. you know. And it's like me, Krishna, like a bunch of us happen to be there at the right time, mm -hmm. but. I'd be doing this anyway. So, you know, I, I, how does it feel to me? It feels like practice. It feels like my life would be greatly improved if I did mantra for two hours right now. And if I can include as many people in that practice, mm -hmm. then I'm doing a service at the same time. So. Yeah. You know, I mean, I, I said, like, I grew up psychic. Mm. And what do you do with that? You know, like, I had to kind of, like, I had to learn, I had to learn things. Um, what, what did you do? Like, how? You have to learn how to turn it on and off. Right. You know, like, I went, was hanging out with some Tibetan monks or something, and somebody asked a question, because, you know, they're Siddhis. Um, they're, I guess they call them magical powers that are a result of doing yoga. Right, all these spiritual practices. There's certain perks that come along with them. If you misuse one of those siddhis, <laughs> it's gonna be your life is gonna be more than a wreck. You should ju just stay where you started. <laughs> um, but he was saying, you know, like, so, you know, like reading minds. That's like a normal, like in an ashram, you meditate with people. You can, you can read their minds. You know, like in the ashram, we always tried to keep a secret if you're pregnant. You know, people got married, couples, this and that, and it's like, you know, you kind of wait just to see if the mm -hmm. baby's going to stay, you know. But everybody knew you were pregnant before you announced that you were pregnant, and it's like, I knew it. It's like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, here you are, and it's like, I was with these monks, and, and one of the kids asked, you know, well, can you read my, my mind right now? And he said, why would I want to? Why would I want to have that? particular gift turned on all the time, I would just be reading all of your garbage and everyone else's, <laughs> you know, <laughs> like it was like, oh, discernment, I see, right, okay, yeah. <laughs> you know, wow. so it's like, it's used for diagnostics, mm -hmm. empathy, right. it's like you need to be able to find out quickly, like, what is, what is wrong with this being, how can I help this person, um, correct their body or correct their path, mm -hmm. yeah. so then, you know, you would turn it on. So, so but, I, you know, it's, it, for me, it's really, it is really practice. And when I do it myself, I am wholeheartedly and earnestly asking for the blessings of the universe because it's like the wider that I become, the more, the more light that I hold, the more responsibility mm -hmm. I have to carry. Yeah. And there are that many more people that are like calling me and expecting yeah. I, I wake up every day and I'm like, I can't possibly do all this. Right. And somehow it works out. So it's like I'm swimming and mm -hmm. then this musical chair is yep. like, okay, sit down and do this. <laughs> and then go wow. the next one. So you just pray harder. Yeah. That everything is going gonna, is, is gonna to work out. And it's like you do your work 
until your work is kind of okay and then mm -hmm. help other people with their work. And if you've helped other communities, then start working on global warming. Like, <laughs> <laughs> we need help. Yes. So you, so you went from understanding that you had these psychic powers to using discernment to figure out when to turn them on and when to turn them off. How did you transition towards using them for for good or and, and actually integrating into like the spirituality of your life? Like, where did that, like, was that always a part of you with these with your abilities or did you have a moment where everybody brings in something from their last life yeah. you know i mean i just i haven't met any brand new souls like i'm not even sure what they feel like hmm. like i think everything's just being recycled right. somehow but yeah. there must be some moment where like you and i were like brand new yeah. <laughs> like, right. must it had to be it's so what, what a great day right <laughs> <laughs> but um yeah, my kids, like everyone I meet, if I meet them at birth and then I meet them when they're 30, I'm like, mm-hmm, <laughs> you're the same. So everybody comes in with whatever they came in with. So I've obviously done a lot of practice. Yeah. I've obviously done a lot. I have some skills. Yeah, so I mean, I came in with some skills and, and um, you know, take like Dalai Lama says, like that, it, it takes a minute mm -hmm. to figure out how to coordinate the soul with the body because the soul is eternal, the mind is eternal, um, but the body is not. And so body, ha you know, it's like, oh, where am I living and yeah. how do I eat and mm -hmm. what does this body want and it's a lot of how much out. stretch does it need and like how much yoga nidra does it need and, mm -hmm. you know, what problems does it have? So, so it takes a little while to get adjusted and that's true for me too. Mm -hmm. discovering. I, I mean, I, I lived in a psychic healing shrine in, in Africa. Oh, wow. Well, Where, whereabouts I mean, in Africa? In Ghana. In a psychic... And healing shrine. They they train they train um, healers, ministers. Wow. How, wow. Did, you, how so, did you figure out how to get yeah, there? Yeah, that was, well, that was through, um, that was through, I went to Oberlin College and Conservatory and got into the ethnomusicology department. Uh-huh. And so my idea in my junior year of college was to go, I went on tour with um, the Arthur Hall Dance Ensemble, a wonderful black man from Philadelphia, and his mission in life was um, going and collecting all of the indigenous dances from Africa. And so we would, we would learn them, and then we would also learn the songs that go uh -huh. with it. And that's true in India as well. Mm -hmm. So, you know, the mantra, the music, the raga, the... Oh, DC, all the different different kinds of dancing, all the different mudras, all the different, all that is one package. Wow. So we as Americans or Westerners have dissected that into various pieces, but it never was. It was always hmm. one, mm -hmm. one thing, yeah. right? Warrior poses, being in the jungle and, mm -hmm. you know, being an archer and all of that stuff. Like it's all one. So, um, yeah, that was... My trip there to go and learn um, the music and the dances of the tribes, and I ended up staying there. I was supposed to study dance at the University of Ghana in Accra, and there was a violent, well, peaceful coup, I suppose. wasn't so peaceful, maybe, for me. Um, student demonstrations, things like that, and so I, I had to leave, so mm -hmm. I wasn't able to finish. Wow. So I was there for maybe two months. Wow. I went to Nigeria and, you know, so, but, you know, that, that was me, mm -hmm. you know, it's like, I have to know. Mm. So as soon as I got up to the healing shrine and it was like, uh, we wake up before the sun and we drum. Oh, can I come? <laughs> what hap What happens there? You know, and it's yeah. like, well, no, I mean, you wouldn't, you wouldn't want to come. Every day they brought me an egg, which... You know, like a fried egg uh -huh. kind okay. of thing, you know, <laughs> not knowing I've been a vegetarian since I was seven, you know, and it, and it's like, it's an egg from their chickens. Like they're eating bats and dogs and, you know, mm. it's Africa, it's India, right? Wow. They're eating yeah. what's walking around. Right. Yeah. So, I mean, to give me a chick, chicken egg, that's like, that's gold, right? Yeah. So, and I'm just like, what do I do with this chicken egg that's on this plate? <laughs> you know, like I don't eat, I, I don't, I don't eat animals. I stopped when I was seven. You know, mm -hmm. my parents were like, if you're not gonna, if you're not gonna eat what we serve you, 
then you can sit on the porch. Yes. <laughs> so I'm like, yes, finally, like, I'm sit on the porch. It's like, hmm, this is good. <laughs> <laughs> so they were just like, okay, fine. And so I don't even know what I did. Probably just ate the, my band members say that I only eat the garnish. The garnish. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Anyway, again, same thing. Like yeah. my mother's like, you're always very different. So at seven, you were a vegetarian. And how did, where, like as a child to have that. You just level. had was, this feeling. I was like, revolted. Mm. I was revolted. I was just like, what are you doing? Mm. You're like, you're like gnawing on bones. And like, I was just like, this place is barbaric. Mm. Like they haven't even learned about plants and mm. they haven't learned about energy. Like I was definitely born into the wrong time. Mm. Right. I was just, I was disgusted with everything. Yeah. I, hence, she was always a different. <laughs> <laughs> wow. So yes, when I was seven, I, I, yeah, that, I was just like this. This, I, this is not what I do. Right. right. And they're like, oh, that's what we do here. And if you live in this household, yeah, yeah. yeah the, I was sixteen. I went through that as yeah. well. When I so. finally made a connection of the barbarism and separated myself from the culture. To understand the connection to creatures and sentience and my parents had a very similar this is what we do in our house mm -hmm. if you don't they didn't say go sit on the porch they said you'll starve well, i just learned to cook yeah. <laughs> like the, there's just, this lack of education as well they think that if you're not eating flesh and and drinking the milk from a cow then you're depriving yourself of these vitamins and nutrients and proteins where it's like now when you look at the the studies and the education that's out there it's like we actually don't need it to survive as human beings there's so many amazing yeah. even better cleaner alternatives for us to thrive and and be healthy but you know for me as well i come from an eastern european background you know my my mom's ukrainian my dad's russian it's like part of the culture like and so when i yeah. went vegan my mom cried when i went vegan she thought i was killing myself mm -hmm. you know what i mean it was just this weird disconnection of the why and and now it's funny like 10 years later my mom's actually more she's not vegan but she's trying to be more on that side than she yeah, was she's... before um but just to go back to your stories i'm just so curious to know what that experience was like so they had these so they got up, yeah they mm -hmm. got up before the sunrise and the whole community or ashram if you want to call it that they don't call it that um, they come together and they, they drum and they sing. And, oh, yeah, 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 oh, you know, and it's, it's indigenous, right? And mm. you have a talking drum that can talk to the tribes on other mountaintops. And, you know, and so they drum. It's loud. It's visceral. And, you know, they take turns dancing, spinning. Um, you know, the, the head of the tribe will go into trance. And then the problems of the community would be, will be brought Wow. to the the chief or chief chief vest chief stress i don't know anyway <laughs> the big mama the big part. Nice. um yeah and so then the problems of the community would be solved by sunrise wow hmm. so and so stole two of my chickens fine this has some hum, 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 hum. like i said the guru is the one who's making sure that there's peace in the community right so I was like, that makes sense to me. Mm -hmm. So, but then I went back to Accra and there was the coup and the government and, you know, Africa's all about changes, mm -hmm. changing, everything changing. And um, so, you know, what I had available to me at that time was something called the Yellow Pages. It was like a book of mm -hmm. numbers. The white pages had like people's <laughs> numbers yeah. and names on it. And then there was the yellow pages where there was kind of like some advertising. And I looked up yoga, nothing. Looked up meditation. I think I, I might have found something there. Mm -hmm. it was In what city know, was I, this? I, I went back to New York. My mother right. was living there at the time. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it's... Swajaya is going to be the most important thing because now everything is available. Yeah. So you can have a little bit of anatomy and a little mm -hmm. bit of mantra and maybe you can go to this festival and, you know, you can do a little sitaram and a little bit of ecstasy and, you know, it's, yeah, yeah, like, mm -hmm. 
you need to study yourself and keep asking yourself, like, what, what's the next step for me? You know, which is what I was doing. You know, it's, there's some teachers who come on and they say, you know, this was my story and I recommend it for you. Hmm. And I'm like, wait a minute. <laughs> yeah, I know that. How did that guru transfer just take place yeah. with, you know, like exact, you know. So it's like, Svajaya means that you know, like yoga says that the acorn knows how to become the tree. So it's like whatever you're born with is the blueprint for who you will become. And so as you go on this path of self-discovery, it will be revealed to you what your next step is. So is it an anatomy training? It's like it might be. Yeah. Because you have great gifts you know, you have healing hands, you'll become a chiropractor or whatever, like, mm -hmm. that's the next step for you. Or is mantra the, the next step? Like, we're all wired differently. Mm -hmm. So, but the idea is that you become more of who you are, and you become more, um, your understanding increases about why you're here. And so, like, that's the most important thing. Yeah. Right. It's finding that purpose for yourself really and staying true to it yeah because yeah. if you're scrolling man you're being you're yeah. being advertised to mm -hmm. every minute about yeah. who's the right person what's the next training what's the next step for you how mm -hmm. are you going to get your followers how are you going to do mm -hmm. this and that and it's like i have never i've never i've, I've never gone that way mm -hmm. it's just kind of like i'm a wreck right now and I'm going to sit down, I'm going to chant. Yeah. And if you want to sit down and practice with me, you will also be blessed. Before COVID, it was true. And after COVID, it's true. Hmm. People, and, and the universe sends the people. Right. Like if you just, like I was teaching yoga out of my house. There, right. were, there weren't any yoga centers. Like that's mm -hmm. how old I am, right? So I was just like, you know, people come, my brother came, came in my house and there wasn't, like, you know, there's no furniture. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's kind of like a few cushions, you know. <laughs> you know, we eat on the floor, we indi eat India style. And he, like, walked in the house and did a 180 and just walked, <laughs> like, walked out. And I heard him say on the way out, he was like, there's no place to sit in there. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so I was just like, hey, we'll clear out all the furniture. And, you know, every Wednesday morning I'll... I'll teach in my living room. Mm -hmm. And then there were yoga centers, and then I taught in yoga centers, and we performed in yoga centers, and then there were festivals, and then there were like huge yoga centers, and we, we taught and performed there. And now after COVID, there's no yoga centers. And, you know, I mean, You're, the entanglement of the world, the world will always have something to entertain you. Mm -hmm. There are yoga centers. There are no yoga centers. There's... Yoga stars, there's no yoga stars, there's whatever. I mean, there's always something to look at out there. Mm -hmm. And that's not what yoga teaches. Yoga teaches pratyahar. It's like starting to close down some of the holes, starting to exaggerate your inner experience mm -hmm. so that what's going on on the inside is louder than what's going on out there. It seems harder and harder for people to... It's getting really yeah. loud. Yeah. It's it's really noisy. What can you say from going through all of this, like seeing the cycles and the repetition and the increase and exacerbation of the noise and how difficult it's becoming? Like, what do you say to people, or what can you say to help them, un to help them understand the path of quieting, like coming back to the stillness? Niyama, Santosh, like. Right now is a yes. really good time. Yeah. Let's do, all right. Like I'm, I'm telling James, you know, I'm like, I got a half an hour. <laughs> He's like, what are you going to do? I'm like, yoga. <laughs> you know, it's like, yeah. I'm sorry, I can't talk to you in the car. I'm going to do mantra. Mm -hmm. I need it. You're going to be so happy that I did this. I'm a <laughs> much better person after. Yeah. Like staying positive, staying flexible, like fitting in. It's just like, so the world is you know, it's like, ah, oh, the world is nice and serene, it's quiet. Mm -hmm. Let's do beautiful, serene practices. 
It's like, the world is noisy. It's crazy. And it's like, I'm, I'm like on the, you know, like I'm texting people flowers because that's what I use. Mm -hmm. Like when we open the altar, we, we invoke the deities with flowers, right? Mm -hmm. And so we're like chanting, you know, Shuklam Varataram Vishnum Shashi Varanam Chatur Bhujam. And so I'm just like, okay, I will pray for you and send mm -hmm. the flowers. It's beautiful. Well, I'm just yeah. saying like, what do you do in a noisy world? Yeah. Like, keep going. Yeah. Do more practice. Do, do fragmented practice if you can't do <clears throat> right. a whole thing. Like yeah. do... Do mantra, like if you mm -hmm. can't, if you can't do breathing practice, you know, do mantra. Mm -hmm. yeah. That'll lengthen your breath. Like you can't do yoga, fine, then do scalp massage. Right. Do, you know, stimulate your ear meridians. Like do something that will help the body to connect with itself, mm -hmm. to yeah. do what it does so well. Right. And it's like, sometimes I'm like, okay, so I was backing up the car. I just did a twist to the right. So before I put it in drive, <laughs> <laughs> hold on, <laughs> a twist to the left, right. and it's like to maybe that's all I got yeah. for that morning. Yeah, but it's like you're still celebrating. You're still like I'm still going to do the practices as much as I can, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and you know, I never did any yoga at all when I was doing 18 hour programs with Amma. Yeah. You're not getting any sleep. You're just serving. And it's like, if you see someone who's been in service in that way, I'm just like, oh my God, you are so clear right now. <laughs> like I can look into your eyes and just like go, I go forever in your eyes. Like right. you're so clean. So finding a way to serve is one way to help each other and ourselves to maneuver through these dark waters. That's what I'm, I'm really connecting to what you're saying right now. And I think it's important for people to remember that service can be anything, right? It can be service to yourself, but it can also be service to the world, to your neighbor, to a stray dog. You mm -hmm. know, it's beautiful. Yeah. It's, it's very beautiful what you're saying. Yeah. yeah. Well, that releases Santosh. Mm. If you do someone for someone else, you know, if mm -hmm. they reflect gratitude back to you, you might have gone into that moment just thinking like, I shouldn't have had those beers last night or something. Like yeah. you're just, you're not feeling good about yourself. Mm -hmm. But you did something for someone else and they're like, thank you, you're my angel. And then all of a sudden you're in a quandary because your ego or your, what you identified with was, I have a hangover. Then you did something and they're like, you're an angel. So are you going to be the hangover or are you going to be the angel? Like somewhere in there, something has to happen. And then you're like, I don't know. I guess I'm just me. And then you've arrived. Mm. <laughs> you know. That arrival, so it said so well. And yeah. then you've arrived. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, you are who you think you are until you're not. Yeah. And then you got to look again. <laughs> so Jaya. <laughs> <laughs> Today is celebration Svajaya Day. <laughs> That's amazing though. That's so good. In preparation for the full moon or new moon eclipse. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Where everything shifts and changes. So wow. you know. And how do you like it here now in Santa Barbara? We're here sometimes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I like I like the community. I mean, not traveling is different. Um you know, there are communities that I've been part of for many years, 30 years I've been traveling. So, you know, they're like, okay, it's clear now, you can come. <laughs> <laughs> so I've made, you know, a few journeys. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I don't know how everything will, mm -hmm. will pan out. What do you mean by everything? Well, we're in an extinction process. Right. I mean, that, there's an extinction event going on right now. Um, there are a lot more people dying right now. Um, 
Mother Earth herself is crying. Mm. So there are some changes and shifts that are happening. And so I'm saying I, I don't really know how it will work out. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and I mean, if, if it's a full extinction event, then the people will go away and Mother Nature will regenerate herself, yeah. Yeah. which is, you know, a viable option. That's happened before, you know, Atlantis and Atlantis sunk down, you know, I don't know, I remember being on a boat, like holding a scroll. It's like, okay, now what? <laughs> you know? <laughs> um, so we don't know how it will work out. Yeah. But, you know, the, the thing that you're doing that's so beautiful is the community. Mm -hmm. And it's like learning the script, doing the poses, that's good. But it's really about how you're treating each other. And it's like, if you're, if you're feeling well, if your family is in harmony, if your community is in harmony, then your yoga is working. Mm -hmm. And if there are a whole bunch of snags going on, it means more svajaya. Mm. Look a little deeper and just see, like, how can you correct it? How can you clean it up? Clean up your diet. Clean up your relationships. Clean up, clean your spice cabinet. Mm -hmm. Clean your hard drive. <laughs> you know, if you can, can clean it up, then we'll be, we'll be doing better. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, and, it, and the outer world will always be shifting. Mm -hmm. You know, Maya is what they often call it. Maya means to measure. So it's big, it's small. There's lots of yoga centers. There's no yoga centers. There's big stars. There's fallen stars. You know, that there will always be something to measure out there. And there will always be something eternal in here. So how it will work out? Fabulous. <laughs> 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 Do you think that there's a greater awakening that's happening with the collective consciousness right now? Do you see it in your communities? or To me, that reminds me of like Woodstock and kind of like this big awakening of flower power and mm -hmm. like we can change the earth and we can make a difference, you know. And now you have the young people who, you know, are the next generations after that. And I remember my daughter, when she was a teenager, she was like, well, thanks for nothing. You know, like there's no jobs because all the baby boomers are like hanging on to their jobs for dear life. And, mm -hmm. you know, the environment's a mess. And, you know, she, she was like, thanks for nothing. And I was like, well, thank you. And you're absolutely right. <laughs> you could have said it nicer, but you're right. <laughs> And I just want you to know that I tried. I have given it my all. I've really tried to make this world a better place. And if you carry that forward 50 years, which is where we're at now, mm -hmm. you know, like, is there an awakening? I guess. I mean, there, ha there has to be mm -hmm. because we're starting a new age. We're yeah. starting Aquarian Age, which is going to be peace, love, harmony, and understanding, or it's going to be AI and robotics, which is, you know, this, the mm -hmm. double-edged um, gift of Aquarius. Hmm. So it's like, is there an awakening? Yes. And is there a lot of noise, a lot of robotics, a lot more digital information, a lot of us being more attached to robotic influence, robotic surgeries, robotic everything driverless cars, whatever, yeah. um, we're fascinated with it. So then it's just like, yeah, but peace, love, harmony, and understanding means you have to go the extra mile to like connect to people, mm -hmm. meet your neighbors, find out who else is on the podcast, find out who else is in the community, like reaching out, trying to figure out ways that you can befriend each other, to help each other. Mm -hmm. like it really is all about one person helping another mm -hmm. and we're seeing that mm -hmm. yeah you know little farms and little yeah. yoga communities yeah. and little like little everything it's all about people yeah it's interesting I, I something that i've noticed since you know the pandemic hit and it's affected people in different ways 
personally, what from what I've seen, there's a lot more people kind of retracting back to almost like the primitive way of, of living, like moving into farms or really focusing more agriculture, growing their own food, or even, you know, if we even look at Costa Rica, where we spent a lot of our time, you know, you see these beach communities booming of people wanting to get out of the cities and to be closer to the earth, to live more in harmony with nature. And to me, when I see that, I'm like, as much as it sucks when all these, your little town is exploding with a lot of people at the same time, you're like, wow, it's beautiful to see that there is something that something terrible like a pandemic has shifted in some people's minds of wanting them to come back to themselves, come back to that harmony with nature. And so when I see that, I'm like, well, maybe, maybe there is some kind of like awakening that's starting to happen, at least for some people wanting to change their lives, wanting to come back to that connection that has been so lost, you know, and that gives me hope. <laughs> right. Yeah. Well, and you know, this podcast is not being sponsored by an advertiser. No. Well, I'm just saying. So the stuff that's very loud is the stuff that's going to be making money. Mm -hmm. So it's like, you know, even the pandemic was kind of a media campaign. Right. Um, and so you might look at your screen or your phone and be like, oh my God, the world is going to hell in a handbasket, right? And it's like, that's true. Mm -hmm. But what you're saying and what I want people to understand is that the people who are doing the right thing, they're not shouting out about it. They're not paying for advertising. They're not, they're not spending money on media mm -hmm. and they're not spending their, their time or their money or energy trying to convince others of what the right thing is to do. They're just simply doing it. And so those people are a little quieter. Mm -hmm. And so you can look at your phone or you can start going out somewhere and start looking for people who are doing the right thing mm -hmm. and you will find them. So they're just, there are all these grassroots communities that are just yeah. kind of like coming up, but they're not online. Mm -hmm. They're, they're just, they're doing the right thing. So you, you can find them. Right. We did it before there was the internet. Yeah, that's such an important thing for people to hear because as, as to go back to the idea of the pandemic, there's also been this increase of loneliness. People have been separated. There's been, like you mentioned, all these communities shut down, yoga centers shut down. Everything that people have known and was like their base was taken away from them. They were put into the homes to sit in isolation. So now we're coming out of it and there's also at the same time the sense of loneliness and we need to sev like we need to fix that. We need to, you know, rekindle that. Well, outside of just infrastructure shutting down for them, they've also we've also been severed and separated from each other. Yeah, there's no. been a division sown, exactly, which is it only increased, yeah. and exacerbated. But the now people are are looking, and they're trying to well, find hopefully. where do I fit. Well, at least some people mm -hmm. we know they're like they're coming back to a community. We don't also feel the same way, like. That's why why we're doing we, this podcast? Why we're doing this podcast is for the first time we're like, oh my god, we get to meet people. It's Where always are you? <laughs> yeah. it's just been me and Mark most of the time, like you know, traveling and just you know creating yoga videos and programs. But it's been a very lonely journey because it's just us. Mm -hmm. And finally, we're opening our hearts and and getting to meet wonderful people and have conversations and travel mm -hmm. and and just build these friendships and relationships, which is definitely filling our hearts because mm -hmm. that's something we've been missing so long. Even before the pandemic, we felt very lonely and in search of this like community, like a real community of people that support one another and, you know, are willing to share the light. In the physical space. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. There is a, I mean, we have a beautiful community of we, people. We do. Yeah. But it's such, but it's, with it's, the screens, there's such a disconnection. Yeah. It's a little more in the ether because it's, you're not there physically with people. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I yeah. mean, I do a Friday night kirtan online, you know, Facebook and... Yeah, and I see Fridays with Wa, right? I love yeah, whatever that you that, do. Yeah, <laughs> I love Friday them. night, yeah. something like that. Yeah. But it was like, um, the, you know, we leave the chat room open and mm -hmm. it's a live stream. So it's like, if I do travel to their town, I'm like, I know their handle, you know, like mm -hmm. a lot of the people mm -hmm. who chat in. And so it's like, that has become a group light event yeah, mm -hmm. because it's like they're chatting in what's going on. I'm like, okay, use the chat room. Mm -hmm. You know, like, what are you grateful for right now? You know, mm -hmm. and it's like, just got out of surgery. And it's like, okay, good. Like, 
we're praying for each other, we're creating some kind of connection. Mm -hmm. And they are making connections to each other. Yeah. And then finding them, finding their friendship outside the podcast. You know, so it's not that one way is bad and the no, other yeah, way is sure. not, you know. Mm -hmm. And it's like this podcast might reach people that we might not be able to travel to, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, but it's just like... Um, The loneliness isn't because we're not connecting to each other. The loneliness is because the structures are dissolving. And so schools, churches, politics, health system, like mm. all the structures that we've had are suddenly crumbling. They're not working. They're kind of like going away. Yeah. And so then the loneliness is like, wait what are we doing here? And then there's some people that are kind of on a certain bandwagon, helping to text and they're being influencers and, you know, they're being invited places. And I'm like, what's it like to be an influencer? You know, and I'm like, <laughs> wow, like what a trip, like what a ride that must be mm -hmm. to have this identity of like, I'm an influencer that someone else gave you. And so when they determine that you're no longer an influencer and discard you, mm -hmm. then which one are you going to believe? Yeah. You know, that kind of thing. Like, I'm like, well, it's a powerful ride. Mm. It's going to be a painful ending, but <laughs> it'll be a powerful ride. Right. So I'm just saying, like, not everybody is subscribing to the stuff that you see on your phone. Mm -hmm. And so as you go out there and you talk to people, you find farms, you, you know, one of my, I asked one of my clients, I was like, so what are you guys doing this weekend? He's an accountant. Like, he's an accountant for, like, a $20 million company, right? Does all of the, all, everything, all the <coughs> accounting stuff. I said, so what are you doing? He says, well, my wife and I are going to go to a, a fungi gathering. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, a fungi. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> like, I was like, really? You know, so I was like, oh, is it like Paul Stamets? And like this, yeah, yeah. You know, and it's like, of all things... And I'm just like, right? So it's like somehow mm -hmm. your heart will lead you to some kind of new thing. Mm -hmm. So then really is all, it, is all that's required is for you to do some kind of purification practice and then just be open to something new. Mm -hmm. That's beautiful. And then your heart will lead you mm -hmm. to those people. We know that the heart leads you to teacher. Yeah. Yeah. When the student is ready, the teacher appears. So it's like... If you really believe that the universe is perfect without the phone, the phone is perfect too, but the, the world is also perfect without the phone. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So then you can just allow your, your heart to lead you into something new. Mm. It's a severance that's so important. I think that's important for people to understand too. It's um, like you were saying, like on the phone, there's so much noise. Like they, they want you to believe that, you know, the world is going to hell in a handbasket, as you said. Well, it is. Because, That's true. Yeah. And we're at the, the Pis all of the Piscean structures. And, and the more you focus on that, the more that becomes your reality. And the more that you figure out severance from their narrative and believing in a world that exists like that, the more you can believe in a world that exists with opportunity and with mm -hmm. people out there that you can connect with that don't have to live inside the singular reality of that, that dark narrative. Um, and like you're saying, there's so many... Like you, there's so many people out there doing things. Yeah. There's so many places you can go to find, find the people like you that know there's more to life mm -hmm. than just being succumbed to the noise. And I love what you said about being open. That's so important, right? Is opening our hearts to it. Just, mm -hmm. yeah, go out there. Yeah. You know, look what's out there. Or just, uh, even just to be willing. Mm. Willing's nice. To yeah. be open. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You that's know, really beautiful. And, and following the dissolution, like I'm not, not saying that that's a bad thing. You can follow the destructuring, mm. you know, but just know while you're watching all the yeah. corruption, all like all the different things that are going on. It's like, did you hear how much Big Pharma made on you yeah. know, such and such? And it's just like, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, isn't that lovely mm -hmm. that we finally have an opportunity to restructure what that is? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it's like, so you're following that and you're watching it kind of like corruption or dissolving or whatever. And then, you know, you're like, okay. So then the people that you talk to, they're like, I don't know. I mean, I'm not, 
I'm not even following it anymore. I mean, I just got back to my life. Mm -hmm. And you're like, oh, that's wonderful. (laughs) You know, which is how it should be. But so in other words, like the mantras don't say that it's good or bad. Yeah. It doesn't say that everything's going to work out. It never promises that. For sure. It doesn't say you're going to be rich and thin and famous or anything. And it doesn't say that your 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 life will be a disaster. It's, it doesn't curse you. Mm-hmm. You know, J. Ma, it's just like, wow. Yeah. The mother, like, or just the opening. It just creates a geometric space for you to process your life yeah you know so it's like if if you're bringing into your circle a lot of information about how the world is dissolving and how the world is destructuring you know then you have to also bring in a certain amount of information that people are self-guided i like that i think the awareness is important and i think i i spend a lot of not a lot, but a fair share of my energy, making sure that I'm aware and getting clarity on what the reality of these structures might actually be. Because I think only through that awareness can you understand the need to replace them with something more beautiful. So, you know, to understand big pharma is corrupt, I think is a very important idea that more people should focus on for a minute, but not succumb to the idea that we're doomed because of that. Mm -hmm. On, On the other side of the truth, like, and whether it's a good truth or bad truth, doesn't really matter, but on the other side of what that is, is an opportunity to, to create it again. And, and I think that the more of us that become aware about these things and these structures dissolving and why only leads to a greater opportunity to revolve once again. Yeah. Well, even though there was sexual abuse that brought yoga to the West, mm. even though... Mm-hmm. We're focusing on the teachings that allow people to grow. Right. Even though, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah exactly. So, you know, you, 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 can, you, you can look at it any way you want to. Mm-hmm. And it's like, that stuff will always be true. Mm-hmm. It will always be true. But it's like, what's true for you? What is your, what's your next step? What is your heart calling for you to to do Mm. and it's like you can get certain amount of information or data online i don't even know what's true anymore yeah Yeah. because of how things are being paid um and so you know it's you don't know you don't Mm -hmm. know what's advertising and what's the real thing and so then you can get an idea on your phone just get a a reading Mm -hmm. and then we come together and we talk you go out you go to the supermarket it's like hey (laughs) <laughs> How are you doing today? You know, so then you're getting different information. Mm-hmm. By You know, like, sometimes <laughs> when I ask James, you know, like, looks like it's going to be a beautiful day. He'll be like, yeah, well, it's going to be. <laughs> and I'm like, no, I'll just go outside. And smell the air. Thank you. <laughs> I, I know that the weather thing I'm just, just yeah, no, I know exactly that. I'm just saying the numbers yeah. are fun, but it's like, yeah, don't yeah. forget to get your information. Don't forget to feel, yeah. mm-hmm. you know, and keep asking, keep, keep asking, asking, keep asking like, yeah. what is it that you would have me do? Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's you know, good. why am I here? What, what, what is it that I, what am I supposed to be doing? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I know about all that. Yeah. Please tell me, what is it that I should be doing today? How can I serve in that way as well, right? That's a beautiful question to ask. You know, there's been times when I felt lost in my life, um, just sitting in meditation and meditating on, on a mantra of just asking, how can I serve? You know, and just letting that whatever comes through, because it always does. Somehow something will guide you in your heart but it's just being open again to the universe to the divinity to work through you and to guide you in the right direction it's been a very powerful tool just inquiring of being a service well but it is yeah. it is in its essence even when you're doing svajaya, when you're doing your service mm-hmm. it really is still about svajaya because you're 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 studying you're studying yourself mm-hmm. you're uncovering 
what you won't do for yourself, you will do for your family. Mm -hmm. What you won't do for yourself, you will do for someone in your community, and that's how you're made. And so as you're doing that, you're revealing an aspect of yourself, and that's the only reason that you would be doing it. I mean, yeah, those brownie points as well for doing, mm -hmm. you know, community service. Mm -hmm. But, like, uh, you know, um, one of Amma's swamis, they were taking the donations, charitable donations, and they were building housing for um, some people whose town had been washed away by flood, something like that. Anyway, so this, this one swami was in charge of all the house building, and one of the guys who was receiving one of the houses every day would go there and watch the swamis build the house while he was smoking a beady, yelling insults the entire day. Like, what? You know, and so they were like, we're doing community service here. Like, you know, so they went back with Emma, you know, it was like, this guy is being so belligerent and we're giving him a free house. Right. And she was like, your job is to do the service. His job is to receive. Hmm. End of story. The reason that you're there is to build that house. Hmm. So it's like, what is it that you want me to do? You have to be really clear on that because the world might send you a different message. Mm -hmm. You might be going to AA meetings and being a sponsor or something and... Your sponsee is just like, you're doing it all wrong. Yeah. You know, and you're just like, Svijaya. It's like, okay, what can I learn from this? Mm -hmm. And it's like, what I can learn is how trauma works, what it looks like, how, you know, shame and blame, like how that works. It's got to be your fault because it can't be my fault, you know, and why I would put myself in that position. And then being really clear about what your position is as a sponsor. So I'm just saying, like, this isn't all one be happy family. Like, yeah. you have, you have yeah. to be fearless. And, and, and when you do ask, what is my next step? What am I supposed to be doing? You better be clear on that. Because you're going to do it no matter, mm -hmm. no matter what. Mm -hmm. You know, and that's what makes you strong. That's what the purification is all about. You know, it's like you were saying something really beautiful about like what my concerts are like and this and that. And I'm like, oh, no, on that particular day, man, this happened, this happened, this happened, and this happened. It's like I was just sliding into home base to get to that <laughs> concert. And then I'm just like, okay, help me. And so, you know, Shavasana, which is, you know, everybody says, oh, my God, I love that CD. And it was like everything was done in one take. I was off tour. My life was a mess. I didn't know what to do. I just sat there. I decided to go into a studio, looked in the yellow pages one more time, looked in the yellow pages, found a studio, asked him if I could come in, went in, did everything in one take. The guy was high on opiates because he had some kind of back problem. He would press record and then he would pass out. I mean, pass out. Oh my goodness. <laughs> right? And so then I finished singing and I'm like, was that okay? <laughs> You know, nothing. Go in the control room and he's in a coma, you know, like I'm just like, oh and then God. he's like, huh? And it's like, <laughs> I'm like, I'd like to do another take, please. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Put on another tape, get all, and, you know, hit record. <laughs> I mean, what was that? That was me in a place where I was just like, once again, just asking for assistance. Mm. And people get assistance when they listen to the recording, even me, I'll listen to, I had, was moving one time and all I, all I could get was like a little 30 second sample of one of the songs on Shavasana. So I just listened to 30 seconds sample for mm -hmm. five hours. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> so that energy that you are radiating, you were just connecting to it even when you were listening to it. That's what I'm saying. It's that fearless thing. If you really yeah. ask, yeah. if you really ask, like, what do you want me to do now mm -hmm. in this situation with the world like this, mm -hmm. with my responsibilities, with my longings? Like, now what do you want me to mm -hmm. do? And then get clear on that and then just really do it. 
Mm-hmm. Can you imagine if I was had if I wasn't clear on it? I'd be on the phone. The engineer is like he's passed out. I don't I don't think I can finish the CD. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's probably not the right time. It's probably an omen. <laughs> and like I don't know. Mm-hmm. I mean, right? But you're just like okay. Do it again. <laughs> how do you think, like, if, if people are watching this and wondering, how do I get clear? Like, how does somebody, like you say, you get clear on it, you get fearless and you go. What do you think the, what should people be looking for to understand the message of what they should be doing? Spend time with yourself. Don't, you know, if you're overstimulated, then pratyahar. Mm-hmm. You're going to, Close, close your eyes, close your ears. I mean, do something, you know, like, all right, so say, uh, place your hands on your heart. And we won't even say Om, because in some yoga centers, they're like, Om is from another religion or another oh, okay. tradition. So we're oh. not even going to say Om, even though Om <laughs> basically just represents the sound of the universe in motion. Yeah. It's just the humming. Mm-hmm. Of the universe. So we're just going to hum. Okay. Place your hands either on either side or one on top of the other. And you can breathe when you need to. Lips are touching, teeth are not. And you can hum any note you like. And we'll just do it for about three minutes. Y'all can do it from wherever you are. And what I want you to do is to just feel the sound underneath your hands. So you're creating a sound and there's a vibration that's running through your body that you, you can actually feel. Okay, so just just feel that as you make it. your own breath cycle. So relax the hands, relax the posture, and feel the vibration where your hands were. Chin bows slightly to the heart.
feeling the space between the eyelids, the space between the earth and where you are sitting. The space in the mouth, space in the body cavity and around the body cavity. And when you're ready, blinking the eyes a few moments, a few times to come back. Wishing peace and happiness to all beings. That each being might find the path that's right for them. That allows them to feel like they matter. That their contribution makes a difference. That they can open their light, their purpose, their mission. and collectively evolve together. We offer gratitude to teachers, saints, sages, angels, fairies, soul guides, all those in non-physical form who really care about how this works out for you. Thank you for guiding, for teaching, for caring. We offer gratitude to all the friends, family, community, the film crew, the lighting crew, to Mark, Juliana, all the members of this community, some who keep things going for us while we go and do service. We offer blessings back to them. And we offer gratitude to this beautiful union of soul and body, which only comes this way once. Soul is eternal body is not. With gratitude, namaste. 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 Thank you so much for having me. Thank you. That was so beautiful. Blah, 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 blah. (laughs) And you know what else? (laughs) And you guys out there. Oh, wow. What a beautiful... Yeah. Centering of the energy. Thank you so much, Ra. It's been so mm-hmm. beautiful and an honor yeah. to sit with you today. And, you know, one last question I would just ask you if there's everyone that's listening and watching this, you know, how would they connect with you and how can they download your beautiful music? And maybe you can just share the best places to go for that. I don't know. I don't know how people find each other <laughs> <laughs> but you have an instagram account I have, yeah. well yeah. yeah i mean there's wahmusic.com mm-hmm. w-a-h music.com um, and if you were looking for me online it would be w-a-h exclamation point mm. um, my name means wow in a lot of different languages um, so i just used the exclamation point because i didn't think you could say wow without an exclamation point. <laughs> so now that's that's a character symbol. I didn't know this would all happen. So mm-hmm. if you look me up online, um, use exclamation point, and that brings me up. Beautiful. It's amazing. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you for doing what you do. Mm-hmm. My goodness, likewise. <laughs> yeah. All right. Amazing. Until I come to Toronto. <sighs> yeah. yeah. We're not really in Toronto oh. very much anymore, so... <laughs>